Welcome back to Mecha March Madness. And yes, I know we already have to draw festivities to a close, but it is what it is. Real life got crazy and we'll come back around to it next year. Still, we gotta close out strong. Go out with a bang. So who should we cover? Do we talk about the big, bad robot daddy of them all? Metal Sonic? An E100 series, maybe? Or do we continue down the Mecha Sonic line? We certainly got a lot of surprises out of that weird Mecha Sonic from Sonic Adventure. Who knows what we can unearth if we talk about S3K Mecha Sonic? What a cool design. But you know what? I think we should maybe instead talk about the precursor to that robot and really get into Silver Sonic. Wait, no, not that one. This one. Yeah, there we go. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to close out things with what has to be the ugliest Sonic robot to ever exist in this franchise. And yes, I am including the likes of Pseudo Sonic or that weird exploding baby. Just look at this thing. He is a real, actual boss from a Sonic game. From Game Gear Sonic 2 specifically. Or Master System if you want to get real weird about it. I didn't grow up playing through these games, and in turn I literally did not believe this was a real design for a good portion of my life. I did see the occasional screenshot, and I had come across the official... <clears throat> art, but there was no way that this was an actual enemy in a Sonic game. Even Archie, on their worst days, didn't concoct designs this terrible. But ironically enough, it was thanks to Archie, many years later, that I finally realized, yes, this sad little wind-up toy is indeed a Sonic bot. And not just any Sonic bot. He's technically the only one to ever officially be named Silver Sonic. Granted, that's only in America, and there are other sources saying other things. You know how it goes with the mechas. Sorry. Sorry, Genesis Silver Sonic. Guess we gotta call you uh, Robo Sonic. Thanks, Lego Dimensions. Well, I can't just pick on this squirt the whole time, though, right? At least not without some help. Gotta team up with someone and really make this robot feel miserable about itself. So to help me along, I have my good friend Ceres, who's gonna hold down his extending arms behind his back while I punch him right in his yellow chest plate. Hey, Nick, thanks for having me on, but, uh, I'm sorry. I am so... So sorry. We are not beating up on the bot just yet. You see, I'm the punching bag right now. I played this fight for footage, and holy crap, why would Sega do this? Why would they do this? Why would they greenlight a pipe that just sends you to death with no way for the player to know how? And, and right before a boss fight in a game with limited continues on a console that has limited batteries and, and, and no saving in the middle of the game. Why? why? Who greenlit these design decisions? Okay. I'm good. I think I can handle this now. So, Silver Sonic. Or the prototype Silver Sonic? A garbage can with PVC pipe for arms? Yeah, no, seriously, something's wrong here. This looks like Robotnik just threw some scrap together and called it a day, and I'm gonna be honest, with how that smile's basically etched into the metal frame, I can only assume he's hiding an immense amount of pain. I mean, I, I get it, buddy. If I had to exist like that, I'd hope Eggman went all Joker on my tin can, too. But let's go ahead and try to take an objective look at this doofus of a design. I mean, seriously, it looks like Eggman aimed for R2-D2 and ended up with Jar Jar Binks. Looking at the, uh, official artwork, we've got eyes that look like they were grafted off of Cyclops' X-Men costume, a permanently etched smile, a square nose, a body that's just literally scrap metal pasted together, a jetpack that can't decide if it's on one side of his body or on the back, a singular arm with one of those weird crane game claws at the end? I mean, seriously, how did Eggman plan to catch Sonic with this thing? Everybody knows crane game claws suck at grabbing literally everything. And then we've got these shoes. Not only are they larger than his head, including the quills, uh, but also they've got an exhaust pipe sticking out of them, which, I mean, I, I guess it kind of works for propulsion. Uh, kind of, if you just ignore the laws of physics. Uh, to add insult to injury, he's also holding on to a chaos emerald in this game, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that. I have to admit, I am impressed with how much detail you could gather from this sad clump of pixels. That's more effort than the designers gave this little guy. I seriously cannot get over how hilariously hideous this art is. The sprites are pretty awful, yes, but we could be a little bit more forgiving concerning how limited the hardware was, especially for an earlier Game Gear game. But when you look at the official actual 
beautiful art. Yikes. Honestly, a palette swap Sonic Sprite would have been a more justifiable choice than this. I always thought that Genesis Silver Sonic, or Mecha, or Robo, or whatever, was a pretty sloppy design, especially considering that Metal Sonic's look was created right around the same time. But compared to the Game Gear version, Genesis looks like a work of art, especially considering he's got some really awesome concept art as well. Yeesh. Considering how much time I've spent gushing about the look of so many characters in this franchise, it's honestly astonishing how bad this design is. It's like they were actively trying to make an ugly Sonic robot. If somebody took more than a few minutes putting this look together, then somebody was overpaid. And who knows, maybe that was the intention. It's not like this was the main version of Sonic 2. So, now that we've covered this uh, fuster look of a design, let's talk about why this is a thing. So, in Sonic 2, and no, not the good one, Silver Sonic is created by Eggman as one of his five master robots, as opposed to, uh, robot masters. I guess Eggman didn't get the memo that the robot masters didn't work out so well for Dr. Wily, but, well, Eggman and Wily didn't work out so well together in the Archie series either, so... Well, it's like 20 years later, I'm getting ahead of myself. One dumb fight, so what? That doesn't define all of their bromance. Silver Sonic is found in the second to last zone, the scrambled egg zone. If you collected five Chaos Emeralds up to this point, you'd also get the sixth from this guy's broken shell, but uh... I mean, if you want to subject yourself to the pain that is Sonic 2 on the Game Gear, and rest that Emerald from his cold, dead body, and be my guest! Oh, okay, no, 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 I said I, said I was done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring that up in therapy later. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. This game... Seriously, it's traumatizing. Anyway, back to Silver Sonic. He's got some pretty basic attacks. He's got a rolling attack, uh, much like the spin that Sonic has. And then if you try to attack him during any of his rolling or jumping attacks that I'll put him in the balls, he'll just bounce right off. He's also got this really weird move where he just stands there and tries to reach out and touch you with that crane game hand of his. And it's just... It's, it's so strange. I, I, mean, I mean, look at this thing. Oh god, it's like those weird Sonic comics that showed up online a few years ago around the movie. I think Sonic might be pregnant now. You know what's kind of sad? This robot can't even muster a proper spin dash. Every other spin dashing Mecha Sonic will mess your day up. All you can do is get out of their way. You can't match their ball form. Silver Sonic here not only doesn't damage you if you roll into each other, you can actually knock him away, turning this boss fight into a game of racquetball. He's doing his best, guys. I promise. And this would be all we would see of this sad, strange little robot for the longest time. But then here comes Sonic Mania with all of its super obscure references. Did they bring back S3K Mega Sonic? S2? No! No, of course not. Whitehead isn't some basic bitch programmer. The dude stretched his arm all the way down to the depths of Sonic history and plucked this weird little tin can out and plopped him into the middle of their Metal Sonic boss fight. His design is improved just a little bit in Sonic Mania, where he gets not one, but two arms, and he's just a little more bouncy in this game, as well as having random spin dashes and jumps that make him a little more acrobatic than in the original release. But truth be told, his overall design looks a little cleaner and more put together in this game. Looks like Robotnik had a little more time to bake this design out. I do have to give credit to how detailed this reference is, because if you've never played the Game Gear game and you just ran into this thing in Sonic Mania, you might not be entirely sure how to progress further in this battle. But if you knew what would happen when you knocked your hedgehog balls together, you would know to send the sucker flying into metal. But I guess this was a tad bit too obscure, as they would update this part of the fight to make it a little bit easier but man, talk about a deep cut. At the end of the day, though, as a boss, he's really nothing to write home about. I mean, as in most things Sonics, though, we do get some expanded information in the comic series. Now, this guy's been kind of retconned out of being retconned in this fashion because, well, we're going to talk about the Archie comics. And, well, there's a throwback story in there about Silver Sonic being a prototype of the present-day Metal Sonic, and it ambushed Sonic in Scrambled Egg Zone, and... I mean, this is the same place you fought him in the Game Gear game, which is when Sonic was trying to save Tails, and that's a nice throwback, but that's about all the information we've got. I mean, I know I said they expanded on him in here, but I never really said how much. And with this information about him being a prototype Metal Sonic, it kinda makes Metal sacrificing a bunch of copies of him in Sonic Mania a little bit more morbid. In the end, we've got an old Eggman robot here who's had a really trashy design. A moderately improved redesign, but ultimately still fails in comparison to the final design of the one true blue Metal Sonic. But 
That's enough yabbering out of me. What did you think of the Quill trash can, Nick? It's hands down one of the ugliest damn things I've ever seen in any video game. He was clearly designed for the tiny pixels allotted on a Game Gear screen, and I guess they did that even on paper. And because of that, his look quickly became outdated. And there really isn't much else you can do to elaborate on that core design. But jokes aside, that's sort of what makes him endearing. Look, I know there are some of you who have not waited this long before leaving comments and already defending this weird tinfoil version of Sonic. If he had ears, I would cover them so he wouldn't hear all of your hurtful words, you monster! And honestly, I get it. Sonic's a cool character, and he has a lot of cool enemies based off his core design. But this little Silver Sonic? He's the awesome -o of the Sonic universe. He's the type of robot that would show up in a Rob Zombie music video. Yes, that's right. He would slam right into the back of your Dragula. He'd be an enemy force in Plan 9 from Chow's in Space. Most of you aren't even going to get those references, just don't, don't worry about it. He's a goofy B-movie robot. He looks like cobbled together tubing and cardboard. We already have plenty of badass anime mechs. One of the medals is an actual transformer. So why not have this janky jalopy of a Sonic copy as well? It's easy for me to make jokes, but leave it to the talented artists of the community to help me see another side of this design. If it's not a corny B-movie monster variety, you have others showing him akin to a little brother to the many versions of mech. Sonic. Let's be honest, when you consider all the other characters in this franchise, Silver Sonic does not look like he could stand a chance against any of them, especially against the original Hedgehog. And because of that, you can't help but kind of root for him. I mean, I'd be a little worried about his well-being going up against Sonic himself. Yes, okay, I've called him ugly, I've called him a lot of mean names, but he somehow manages to be what no other Sonic bot has ever been. Adorable. And yes, I am including the likes of Tails doll and that weird experience exploding babe. And I really do like the idea that he's some kind of prototype for all the other Sonic bots that we would get down the road. I like that interpretation from the comic, and that's what I'm going to stick in with my own headcanon. So, sure, he's at the bottom of my list in terms of favorite Mecha Sonic designs, but that doesn't mean he's not worth keeping around. I always smile when I see him show back up, and honestly, I kind of hope he keeps showing back up. Let's not forget our humble roots in Sonic bots. And that's going to do it for today, guys, and that's going to do it for this year's Mecha March Madness. Once again, I'm incredibly sorry it is as short as it is. I wanted to cover a lot more than I did, but I just moved into a new house, just transferred to a different job. So no, this is not my full-time job, so gotta work around it when I can. Long and short of it, life's been busy, but I had a lot of fun doing this, and I've got a lot of other stuff down the pipeline, so be sure to stick around. And if you haven't already, be sure you subscribe to Series. He has two separate channels so keep that in mind. He does have some excellent game content and that channel does not have enough views on it. So get over there. I'm going to have links in the description below. He does have another channel that actually talks about real world stuff. Who cares about the real world? But yeah, show him your support. One of the smartest, most well-spoken people I know. So thank you so much, Suries, for joining me today on this weird little robot video. Thanks for having me on, Nick. I love watching your channel, and it really means a lot being able to participate in one of the videos. And thank you again to Kenny for making the Mecha March Madness logo. Again, I seriously love it. I gotta learn some animation so we make next year's intro look way cooler. And of course, thank you to all the patrons who are supporting me. I can't express it enough. I cannot believe there are people that actually put their hard-earned money towards my insane rambling, but I forever appreciate it, so thank you. If you want to talk to me a little bit more, I am on Twitter, and I am on Discord. We got the links for both of those down below. Patreon supporters do get extra roles on Discord, as well as some other perks, including art, podcasts, and some other goofy nonsense. So if that sounds interesting to you, only cost you a buck, and I'll have that link below as well. We will cover some other Sonic games this year. We will certainly get through the rest of the Metal Virus arc soon in Sonic Speed Rating, but I would implore you to go check out the non-Sonic content as well. So hope you stick around and hope you give those videos a shot. Whatever the case, thank you guys again so much, and we will see you next time. Toot toot, Sonic Warriors!